guys. Yo, 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 it is me, the ex Whatever. And today, guys, we are doing another video of what is Deku's Locust King Part 3. After Juno and Deku got out, outside, the class 1A was, well, most girls were eyeing Deku because, hey, even with that, even he's wearing, like, that tight fucking, I don't know, clothes, since, imagine, since he wears uniforms, all that stuck out from the tightness was his abs and his fucking body, and the whole girls were digging it. Of course, Juno was, is like, blushing at this. Well, the boys are fucking jealous. Um, oh my god, they're jealous. Sorry, guys. I just, I, just, it just, I just had, like, one, like, I just had, like, a tiny bit of coffee, and I'm, like, super hype right now, but... It's like, after this video was sent, I'm gonna do what they go was Dream Part 6. Because you guys want to see that shit. However, I have to get the characters' names. I have to, so, the characters' names are Amy, Maya... And Rose, I think. So I don't know if they dragons can grow, so I have to go look back up. I know it's Amy and Maya or May. I can't remember, so I'm sorry. Anyway, guys, now let's both of them walk out. Juno was nervous at first, but Deku told her like, "Don't worry, you can do fine. Besides, you're pretty capable of handling yourself." And Iris always says, claps his hands like, "Hey." Shut up, you two. Get in line. And also, make sure you don't fail or you get expelled. And De Aizawa giving them that crazy smile. And of course, the tests begin. Ida. Now, Ida like, goes for the record. Dick was like, eh, I can just do that in an instant. Deku just dashes like instantly. It took 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. 0.1 seconds. I was like, hmm, I thought that would be way longer. Because Aizawa timed it, but... Yeah, Aizawa couldn't believe it. It was, like, insanely fast, so... Yeah. I'm sorry, guys. Looks like I'm losing more motivation. Sorry about the guys. Okay. Okay. As Deku. Beat the scores. All of them. Including Bak goes with his weak-ass fucking throw. Because, you know, fuck Bakugo. And fuck Ida. I don't know, guys. I just, I just like it when I say that. Fuck Ida. <laughs> just like... I might just make a web that just says fuck Ida. Just for no reason. <laughs> anyway. I was Deku and... As Deku finished the tryout, Aizawa said to Deku, as all the class when he was going to change, Aizawa pulled Deku away from the others, and Aizawa said, what are you? You broke the records like no one else can. You even beat All Might's record, which I thought was impossible. But you've managed to break it. Several times. Several, several times over. No one can beat that record of yours. Doug was like, hmm, that is true, but it is interesting how, how things change. I was, I was just, what do you mean change? Deku's like, oh, nothing. Just talking to myself. I was, I was just, hmm. Very well, and then, Izuku, you may leave. As Izuku Midoriya leaves, he's already gotten changed and left. However, Juno said thank, thank you for making sure, thanking him that Thanking Deku for giving him, giving her the confidence of actually doing it and actually being able to overcome her fears, to be more over to overcome her doubt, to be more precise. And Deku just says, "It's no problem, Juno. Just make sure you don't make sure you don't act like that again. Because if you're on my team, I have to carry you the whole way, Juno. I'm not just really bad teammates working on it." And Deku's, as Deku's turning around, leaving the UA campus, he's, like, smiling as he's walking away. He's like, oh, I can't wait until I make you my bride. <laughs> this should be really entertaining. I wonder how she'd feel about living underground with me. Oh, well. 
It doesn't matter if I live on the surface or on the, on the ground. Besides, so I have to rule a kingdom. Uh, my fuck. Sabo, I'm gonna kill you. I am legit gonna kill him, guys. Sabo. Sabo, if you, like, just saw that, that's how much I'm, like, so mad at you right now. So, I'm sorry. Anyway. As Deku gets back to his, back to his hive, or his locust brethren, or, to be more precise, his hive mind, or kingdom, as Deku puts on his royal wear and sits down on his throne, the car mines have encountered some gear tags. And Deku's like, hmm, let me see them, my fellow car mines. Carmines give Deku the gears. And Deku reads some of them. And Deku's like, hmm. Then this place must have been overrun by gears at one point. Deku stands up from the throne and begins to say to the locust, My fellow locust, if you're reading, if you're hearing my thoughts, this means that there could be there could be a gear compound somewhere in this high on the ground. So, I will be watching this investigation. However, your order still stands. You are to protect the hive at all costs. Defend it with your life, even. And also, oh my fucking god, Sabo, I'm gonna kill you. As. Yeah, guys, if you like, if you like saying, because I keep mentioning the story and he keeps interrupting, so guys, just just tell Sabo just to stop like doing stuff, because I think I might have to turn off my Discord notifications again, because this is why I have them turned off, guys. As Deku's like, <laughs> let's find this compound. Of course, Aizawa told Deku he had the week off because. They had the teachers still had to find out where his quirk was. They had all types of equipment on analyzing him, and they just the readings couldn't make anything of him. They kept saying unknown. They didn't know what he was, or was he even human. And that's why I also have Yuji turned off. However, due to this, their questions just began to be more suspicious. So, as. De because Deku kind of knew about that, but you think you'll took him up. It'll probably well, they probably would try to kick him out. But if they kicked him out, then what kind of training or what kind of what kind of influence will he have on the school? Then Aizawa told to stop the teachers from thinking about kicking Deku out of UA. And Aizawa, and as I said, well. If we kick him out, then we're perfect. Then we're wasting good hero. But at the same time, we don't know what his quirk is. On his application, she doesn't tell what his quirk is. We don't know if it's a speed, a speed quirk, an enhancement quirk. We don't know what it is. But frankly, it all leads up to some guesses: a strength quirk or an enhancement quirk. We have on the list, but we don't know how strong that that quirk or the person is. Teachers agree with Nezu. Nezu said, "Well, he said he'd offer training to the class one his students." And Nezu said to Aizawa, "Aizawa, you've you've told me the proposal, and I want to see what would happen if Deku versed all class one A." And Aizawa said, "Are you serious, Nezu?" And it just says, yes, I want to see if this kid's capable of that kind of bluff. But if he is, then we have to take him serious at all costs. You got that, Aizawa? Aizawa says, yes, sir, I do. Aizawa leaves. And this is like, thinking his head's like, what kind of person could break All Might's records? And a matter of fact, the kid broke made a record that's so unbreakable not even future gen not even gen not even three generations could even beat him maybe the fourth but I don't know 
So he's like smiling at this. It's like <laughs> looks like one of my locust, one of my locust hive minds that I have in the building. This told me everything I need to know. Looks like I will fight the students. However, Deku was uh, seeing this in the old, an old gear, a gears of a gear, a gear hideout, filled with weapons and supplies. However, it was old. However, Deku managed to find the power switch. He turned it on, and, it's, and it had logs in it. And Deku found the log. It was called the Hammer of Dawn. And Deku's fear. Deku just slowly begins clenching his fist. He remembers the Hammer of Dawn. The thing that kept making sure his army armies were reduced to fucking to ashes. However, Deku slowly let go. Deku decided to control himself because he had a feeling he might smash the computer and would lose all the information that it had on it. As Deku is searching up any more gear outposts, it said there are two, but the locations are corrupted. Deku typed in the like the things, because I'm uh, thinking Deku knew about computers since the Queen and him were in a lab for years. So, yeah. As Deku is like the hive mind of this, he's like, huh. man. These gears weapons are pretty good. As Deku looks up how to make them, Deku is he, Deku is using the hives. Deku is using his eyes to make sure the hive knows how to make these weapons and armor. Deku sees all the schematics and blueprints how to make them, what materials, what kind of tools are needed to make them. Now Deku learned all that. And now his locust knows how to do it. <laughs> Deku laughing, just you foolish gears. You left the only computer on and power to this facility. Thanks to you, my locusts know how to use it properly and make sure the power can be repaired and restored. And this facility back in working order. And also some more interesting stuff about it as well. It has some old stuff in it. Robots. <laughs> Guys, can you please tell me what the robots are called? I have Gears of War 5, but I can't remember the names of it. So, yeah. <laughs> you stupid cogs. You always forget one thing. Your precious machines... Well, I could take them over, but that would be just a waste. Besides, I would not rather go toward the surface world, because their quirks, for being more precise, are really different. And I do not want to risk a powerful quirk developing up there due to my actions. And even if someone tried to take my power, they can't. Because it is not a quirk. It's the thing that I was born with. Even if they try to kill me. I just shrug it off like it's nothing. Even if I lost an arm or a limb. It will just regrow back instantly. And if you guys like liking my voice for Deku. Please tell me in the comment section. As Deku gets up from the terminal. And just says. Oh. My locust. If you're hearing your king, come to this facility and repair it. And use it to our wishes. Get better weapons, better guns, better gear. Start making it immediately. And make your king better equipment. Because we never know when we, when we could have another war. Dolks are screaming, All hail, all hail Deku! All hail Deku! And Deku's like so smiling at this, like, oh, it's good to hear that again. As Deku leaves the COD's compound, Deku did manage to reprogram one of the COD's D DVs. I'm going to call it a DV. I'm sorry, guys, if I'm doing it wrong. 
it has a DVs that could be programmed, and uh, yeah, you programmed one and to serve him. Of course, you program big ones like boom, boomers, and the big ones are incredible. Their strength and numbers. I just realized if I have my mic on mute, I am sorry. I'm just kidding, guys. I muted my mic because I was like making sure I didn't mute it. So yeah. Mm. As Deku's like <laughs> goes back to his throne, takes him another. It takes him two days, and he still has. But it takes he yeah. It took him two days to get into the comp gear compound. It took him another two days to get back to his kingdom. And Deku has yeah. He has three more days left until he goes back to school. Of course, Class 1A is already like, studying a lot. And because Aizawa sent Deku homework. Of course, Deku already aced them all. And he was like already done for like the whole week. So he's like had like a lot of free time. So, yeah. As Deku goes back to his throne. He goes to his chamber. of He goes to his bedroom chamber. He takes off, he takes off his shirt and just... Hops onto his bed and just just yawns and like says, "That was exhausting. It took me two days to get back. It took me two days to go to the compound and get back here. So, and it was worth it." Ugh. As the locusts begin using the card facility, making the weapons, building, fortifying, upgrading, and. Defending it. Their gear, their weapons were more like the gears. They had the gear shredder or something. I can't remember the name. Cause the, you know the you know the gun that does. If you like hold it down, you shred through enemies. Yeah, I I, I love that gun. I love it so much. So much blood and gore. And yeah, as Dick he was like just wakes up from his chain, wakes up from his nap. Harry, it's still the third day, so like it's still the third day, so Deku had some time. As Deku gets off his bed and just starts to get dressed in his human clothes, he sees. However, he gets a sense from one of his locusts that there's another outpost, but it's guarded by the COD robots. And Deku just smiles at this, is like, "Oh, this should be fun." <laughs> As Deku takes off his human clothes and puts on his armor. It's a bit old, but it will do. As one of the locusts was only immediately shut after Deku saw this. And Deku kind of was a bit mad because it he, the, the, the cod robots killed more 16 of his locust, bro, his locust. Locust. And Deku proceeded to like running towards the battlefield. And Deku jumps so high. Deku jumped to where the card facility is, making a huge dust ball. And the and the robot said, Hold it right there, citizen. Do not move on do not move beyond this point. Deku looks at the robots and just says, You fools, I'm the king. As Deku vanishes before the robots, and all the all the or the first robot who says that, all the robots like all the fellow robots, like, uh, fellow companions are all, like, their heads all cut off. And there's just a one robot, ro the robot says, See, the robot turns around, and Deku grabs the robot's two arms, and rips them off as Deku kicks them onto the ground. The robot looks at Deku and says, Citizen, citizen, if you do not, do not comply, comply. You you will be charged charge of a of assault, assault, assault against an officer. Dick is like officer. That's rich coming from a pocket of piles and bolts. Well, to be more precise, I'm not going to end you right now. Just why were you activated? The robot said we were activated because we got our distress signal from. Uh, the, one of the card fact facilities. Oh, I see. Well, 
So if Deku flips the robot over and rips out the battery for it, it shuts down immediately. As Deku's holding the battery, he drops it onto the ground, and Deku turns towards the facility. Deku opens the doors, prying them open. Well, he doesn't really pry them open. He just rips out one door off as he goes into it. Deku hits the button for an elevator going down. And this is on the third day. It's still the third day. He has like two more hours until it's like the second day. As Deku goes down to the facility, he sees a lot. I mean, a lot of robots active. And Deku's like, ah, oh, this should be fun. As Deku is going dashing and destroying all the robots. And Deku just ended up. And after Deku killed all the smaller robots, two, three big robots, you know the blue robots, like the fucking, the big robots guys, the big blue ones, with the fucking, yeah, big boys. And Deku says, huh, I've never seen these before. Must, must have been new. I'll wait a minute. Deku has a bit of a flashback of one of the, the years using this giant behemoth. Because Deku has some of the past memories of the of of all the other locuses, but some of it's a bit blurry because some of them didn't survive much, and some of it's a bit more, some of the memories a bit more hazier or just a bit corrupted or damaged. As Deku dodges one of the robot's arms, Deku climbs up, up it, slicing its head off. As the other robot goes in, as he as the robot punches the robot without a head, and Deku goes towards the robot that just punched the, into, punched the punched the robot without the head into the wall. As Deku goes up, the walks in the guy's arm. Deku slides down, ripping off the robot's arm. Now there are just two robots left. The other robot grabs a gun and begins shooting at Deku. Deku begins dodging it. Making sure, making sure nothing hits him. However, the other robot punches Deku into a wall. He begins punching him over and over again. And Deku just grabs the robot with one arm and just says, <laughs> Man, this is fun. I've had, I hadn't had a real fight in ages. Deku just rips off the other robot's arm. Tosses it to the robot that has the gun. Or throws it at him. As the robot falls over and trips, it's the ground. The robot with no with no arms, Deku goes straight towards the straight towards the belly of the robot, and starts ripping it apart, pulling it. Deku begins pulling it up, pulling the upper torso up. It keeps going up until Deku finally ripped off that piece of the robot and threw it to a corner. It was defenseless. And the power for it was slowly draining, so Deku decided not to get, in, not to finish it off yet. However, the other robot got up in time, punched Deku. However, Deku didn't even flinch, or was not even moved by it. Deku was kind of pissed, and Deku was pissed because a sneak attack, eh? Oh, when do these things ever learn? And that's when Deku grabbed one of the big robots sliced the robot's leg off and its arm as the big behemoth was going for to, going to reach a gun Deku stepped on its hand and just slowly ripped off his hand with De Deku's hand Deku ripped off the robot's hand with his hand as Deku tossed the hand over to a robot that was slowly dying Deku goes up to the robot that had nothing else to live for. So Deku stomped on its head, crushing it. A bunch of old oil spilled on Deku. And Deku's like, Oh, that was fun. As the robot with little time left said, You are our locust king. Deku says, Well, well, well. You finally remember me. You tin cans. The robot said, how, how are you alive, life? Gears made, the car made, made sure that you were, you were dead. Deku's like, yes, indeed. 
I was almost dead, but thankfully my queen managed to put me into a trance. So, or into a little cocoon, to be more precise. It took a few, it took years, it took thousands of years, but I've built an immunity to your stupid, stupid effects. Thanks to that, my power has grown f five times, well, fifty times more powerful. Or how should I say, I'm just getting stronger every day. Thanks to your, how should I say it, your gear's plan. Not only did this virus or some type of, some type of machine or ray hit me. I'm becoming more stronger now. More stronger than my locusts combined. The row is like saying, not possible. But Ray was supposed to kill, kill you. It was like, you were close, but you failed. As Dick is walking up to it, smiling, he just says, I thank you for giving me this power. As Deku's hands turn to claws, goes straight to goes straight through the robot's circuits into the brain and rips it out. As Deku crushes it to dust, and Deku's like, <laughs> "Oh, that was fun." And Deku looks at time. It's now the second day. And Deku's like, "Well, well, well, that was entertaining." However, Deku found the power switch, power source, and ripped it off. And Deku showed the locust this. Deku said to the locust, "My fellow locust, come to this, come to this cod, come to this cod safe zone or this cod factory. Destroy every machine that's here. Or be precise, reprogram them and make them obey us, and make sure they don't disobey us or there's any cod left." Make sure no one survives. As Deku is impressed by himself, he's happy. Deku manages to fucking destroy another cod outpost. Now there is one left. However, that one was not on the ground. It was on the surface. However, Deku, since the Deku had two more days left of his vacation, he decided, plus that was like a day ago, so he decided to get dressed for the human world. Of course, he did suffer wounds, but it just took a few minutes to heal. As the locusts were beginning to, for the cod, for the cod facility, they were beginning to destroy any remnants of cod programming or cod intelligence or recod or backups of cod of the cod's plans to destroy the locust or warning of the humanity or for warn or or for humanity to be warned about the locust. Cause that outpost was the intelligence one for the cod, where they kept all the records for the locust. And Deku seeing this said to told the locust that if you see any record about the locust, pit make make a folder for them. Hide them in the deepest darkest things in the that cod facility. Lock it up. And I should, well, and you're like wondering, why should we not destroy them? Because, without any history, history is not meant to be known about, so only when the humans are ready for us, then we may tell them the secret. As the locust understood Deku's commands, the locust made sure that facility was well guarded after that. As as well as the other facility. The factory. The COD's factory for making robots. That fact, the lab, the intelligence facility where they kept all the records. And other secret blueprints. It was well guarded. And Deku thought, and Deku almost remembered. Deku remembered the big giant behemoths. Of them, you know, being a pain in the ass to deal with. And Deku had fun with them. And so the locust, Deku gave the locust an order. 
to make to make some more of those big guys, but only for locust purposes. They were no longer blue, but bright red as in the cod. Their eyes red as well. And putting the locust symbol on their on their arms to symbolize that they belong to the locust. As Deku's now on the surface, just sitting on a wall, having his hands together, to crisscross, and he's like smiling, just saying, <laughs> "Man, that was entertaining. I had a good fight in like that in years." Uh but that doesn't compare to the Great Cod War. Now that was fun. Now where Deku is getting off track. He can't do on the past forever. As Deku gets up from the corner, he bumps into Juno. As Juno like says, "Oh, I'm sorry." And as Juno looks up, she she sees Deku or Izuku right in front of her, and she says, uh, "What are you doing here?" Deku's like, "Oh, I just hang out here sometimes." And Juno's like, "Where have you been? You've not been in class all week, like almost a few days." And Deku was like. <laughs> Well, actually, I have, like, I have vacation off. And June's like, vacation off? Are you serious? But, I, how? All of us are working. Deku's was like, oh, I'm done. And June's like, what? I'm done everything. I'm already, I'm already way ahead of you guys, so. I have two more days off, so. June's was like, are, are you serious? Deku's like, yeah. June's was like, I've been having hard, having trouble trying to study it. Study what? Studying for the for studying for the tests. Deck is like, mm, I see. So let me. You want me to be your the tutor? She says. Deck, she says. June's like, are you sure you're up to the task? Being that hero is difficult, and are you sure you learned everything in class? Deck was like, I'm pretty sure I have learned enough in class. She's like. Okay, then come to my house at nine p nine a like three a.m. Okay, and teach me how to be like to tutor me. Okay, at that time. Okay, Deck was like, okay, then it's a date. And June was like, did the date? And Deck is like, calm down. I'm just joking. June was like, oh, thank God, because I'm not ready for that yet. And Deck was like, ready for what? Uh, no, nothing, nothing. You know Deku. You guys should know Deku. He is playing. With fire. Because he's that way, guys. So, yeah. As Deku's, like, smiling at he's like, Oh, do you know, that, that is, that's absolutely adorable. At that time, at 3 a.m., Deku came, into, came to Juno's house. And, of course, Juno's parents were really nice to Deku because him being tall and, like, having, like, a good body... And having some good looks. And plus, when he's asleep, yeah, he looks like a cinnamon roll. However, if, if you call him that... <laughs> oh, you, you're a dead man, guy. You're, you're a dead man. <laughs> As Deku just goes to Juno's room and they just begin to study it. Or Deku begins helping her with the studying. Uh, Jun Deku's hand goes on... Deku's hand goes on to Juno's by accident. And Deku's like, oh, s sorry... And Juno's like, no, no, it's fine. Just, <sighs> never mind. Dick is like, oh, I thought that would work. Oh, well, I guess I'll try harder. It's now, it's now past Deku's like time to go back to this palace. But Deku told the locust that he's busy with something. So the locust understood this order. So, yeah. And you guys, there is no gonna be like betrayal or no like revolt against Deku because if Deku's the king, because Deku's the king, but however, he needs the queen to keep the locusts in check as well. Because Deku is managing to do that, but it's harder for a king to work alone because without having a queen at the same time to have dealing with the stress of controlling a whole hive mind. It's very stressful for Deku, but not as stressful because Deku learned how to control that stress over the time. So, Deku can handle all the carrying weight. So, yeah, 
he's equivalent to almost having making sure that everything's in proper order. But it would help him kind of a bit to get get some of that exhaustion out. So yeah. As Jun was like tired and goes to sleep, Decker's also tired, so he just decides to sleep sleep like on the ground, just just snoring away. As the morning as it's morning. She was like, shoot, I have to go back. I have to, shoot. I have to go to school. She is, he, notices, he, she, he notices her alarm was not working because so, cause, cause Deku accidentally tripped it over and just fell asleep instantly. So Juno like, got up as quickly, but she slipped on the slipper and landed on Deku. And Deku just woke up like, no. Oh, ow. And Juno was like, closing her eyes as, as Deku as, uh, Deku was also closing, closing his eyes. They both look at each other and like, like blush and like saying like, "Sorry," Juno says, "Sorry." Deku's like, "No, no, no, it's it's, it's fine." Like, because Deku's like actually was flushed, or he did not expect that. <laughs> it's like, "Oh my god, I did not expect that," and I'm the king. I should have expected that. And of course, the locals do not see this because Deku's, Deku does not wish for them to see this. As Deku begins to say, "Juno, um, do you want do you want to ride? Do you want to ride to school?" And she was like, yeah, but you, you're too young to have a car. Or too, yeah, too young to even have a license. Deku's like, well, I know a shortcut. She was like, okay, let me get my backpack and stuff, okay? Deku's like, got it. As Deku's waiting outside the door, waiting outside the apartment for Juno. Juno walks out of the apartment and says, okay, Deku, uh, where's your shortcut? Deku says, hop on my back. And she was like, what? Deku says, listen, if we don't get, listen, Juno. This is the only way to get you in school to school on time, so you might as well do it. Juno says, "Okay, whatever you say." As Juno hops onto Deku's back, and Deku says, "Hold on tight." Deku jumps super high, like he was flying, and he lands to the school, like making sure he was like a badass. And Deku says, "Here, here's your stop," and and Juno says, "Okay, th thanks, Izuku." As Juno goes off into the school, as Deku says, "What a night." Man, what a, what a great day. As Deku, like, almost about to leave, and All Might just grabs onto Deku's shoulders, like, Young man, we need to talk. And Deku's like, What do you want, All Might? All Might's like, Well, young man, what quirk do you have? Deku's like, Oh my god. How many times do I have to say it, All Might? I'm not telling you guys my goddamn quirk. And besides... Deku whispers to All Might's ear, I know your quirk. I know you're weaker. I know you're weak. You were stronger last time I saw you. So you must have given your quirk to someone else. And if you think I have any idea who your successor is, All Might, you're dead wrong. I'm stronger than you, All Might. I've surpassed. I've you I've surpassed you in so many ways, All Might. And your successor, he's not strong enough to even beat me. You have, and if you have, if and there's anyone that has future successors or future, how should I say this? Pass downs of your of your cork. You would probably take you two thousand two thousand years to be able to get onto my level for that for that ability. It will take two thousand years for that much power to be stored up to defeat me. You know, I'm almost like saying, "What the hell is this kid?" He figured out I was like not strong. He figured it out. How? I did not tell anyone about this. So is he actually working for all for one? And Deku's like. Well, All Might. As Deku gets away from All Might's ear and goes, begins walking away, but Deku turns to All Might and just says, If your quirk's called All for One, that means there must be an opposite quirk, right? That could take people's quirks away. And that guy's name would be All for One, right? And All Might stops, and the heartbeat's like, how, 
what the hell? This kid's different. As Deku leaves, because he still has, yeah, he just wastes his second day, so he has one more day off. Until he goes back to school. And that's it, and that's the time when, yeah, the school is gonna, yeah. Oh, right, guys, I was gonna see how much time I have left, so anyway. Okay, so that's Ruby ending off the video there for today. I'm so sorry, guys. But apparently, yep, it's 12. I have to go to bed, so I'm sorry, guys. So, anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please tell me in the comment section if you like it or not. If you didn't, then I understand. If you did, then smash that like button. If you just if you like like my channel, subscribe if you want to. You can if you can. If you don't want to, then okay. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll talk to you later.